right, hello everyone. This is Jabbar Brown with the Musician Training Center, and today we're going to cover some patterns and concepts you can use in your practice time for praise breaks. All right, so today I have with me Micah Blanding on keys. I got Tony Washington on bass, and we have Nigel Blanding on drums. <laughs> all right, so uh, we're going to dive straight in, all right? Um, let's talk a little bit about starting up the shop. I mean, we can be creative for days. Um, and a lot of times there is a cue um, that's happening in a service or even in some kind of event that implies, okay, we're going into a praise break. So do you already have something in mind or how do you approach starting up the praise break? Well, I never have anything necessarily in mind because um, we, we all play it. So it just kind of depends on the feel. So um, like we just ended, um, ended on the one. So common stuff is just three, four, flat five, five. So I can just take what I just did and put it in timing mode. Okay. So like, uh, you know, one, so. It kind of gives that kind of teaser just to kind of set you up for that moment. So if the moment is really there, then you're like, all right, we setting it up? Let's go. Let's ride that. Okay. All right. And that's important, too. And then knowing what key, like if somebody is is um, directing the service and maybe they're kind of in and out of keys, some people will go actually go into key and you can pick it up. Mm. And then other people, they're, you know that they want to go into a shout but they're not in a stable key, not consistent, mm -hmm. consistently. So what would you do in a case like that? Because it could be a little tricky. You it just can. put them in a key and just go with it? Well, I would actually go with uh, the closest key. So if they, say for instance, they in between C, C sharp. So you just gonna give them a key? Yeah, because like, we can give them that key because a lot of times if they keep hearing this, they eventually get to it. But if you hear this, Keep giving to them, they will kind of fall in line with that. Okay, or what's what you're saying? But don't um, don't push them to the point of like, well, I don't like this key. If they're closer to this key, okay. whatever, just stay there. If they're closer down, you know, keep I got them you. there. Yeah. All right, and that's important too. So, all right, so Micah, um, could you show us how you did the sh the starter, the shout starter, okay. like the chords? Yes. So we ended on that note. So the teaser just go to that three. Five, five, five. And back on that one. So when we going into it, I kind of incorporate that. So what I did is uh, two, three, four, five. So. You know, just in and on that, but what it is is that two, three, four, five. Okay. So it gives that teaser, letting us know, like, okay, we're about to go there. Even if I started it by myself, yeah. I know as a band, they can kind of hear where I'm going mm -hmm. and we can kind of set it up. All right, mm -hmm. so cool. Like, okay, if you're playing with a bass player that you don't normally play with, you will probably start and, and implement the bass line yourself. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what bass line would you use or in the shout starter, what bass line did you use there? Okay, I use two, uh, E flat, F, three, F sharp, four, A flat, five. So with that being so dominant, I yeah. try to make sure it's really clear. Yeah. I'm gonna do it again. So by the time he should like have it, if he doesn't have it, he still hear it. By that time, the drummer will come in and set it up because it's kind of expected, like, okay, I got it. Because I still can tell you, like, right. two, three, four, five. So hearing it, it kind of adds that, okay, I hear it and I know what I'm playing okay. so I can be sure about what I'm about to play. So when the drummer comes in or when we come in as a band, it's... Okay, it, it, it actually works out. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also thinking, too, like, when you're playing with the bass line, mm -hmm. okay, are your chords going to be the same after you hear the, the bass player pick it up? 
Because, you yeah. know, sometimes we can play more like uh, rootless chords or something after the bass player picks it up mm -hmm. and doing different inversions. Yeah. So did yeah. you were you basically playing the same chords the whole time or did you switch it when Tony no, picked I, it up? I actually switched it because um, by that time, um, I'm not thinking. I'm more on feel. So okay. I know what I'm, I'm playing. So. So. Organ. Cause I'm changing the inversions. What's one of those um, inversions that you did? So okay. when, you, when he picked it up, I'll show you right here. So I'm playing off the two. Yeah. So F chord. So C sharp, F sharp, B flat. So all goes back and forth for this chord, second chord. So C sharp, F A flat. But I'm going back and forth. Okay. So two. Back, go, go back to the second chord, but the numbers are moving up. So two, three, four, five. Okay. Because that's a good start off. Yes. Just to go from there, and then once you get that, you can change up. But for the dominant reason, just okay. and with that, because that's when that stop mode is just right. kind of put something there. Because even the bass player can jump in on that. Right. So that could actually that could be a pattern in itself. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we that's good. We can keep that in mind. Even though even though it's intended to be a starter, mm -hmm. you can come back later on and use that same, same pattern mm -hmm. as an actual pattern. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then even with the the chord inversions. So basically, if I understand, you really need to know your way around in the key of of C sharp if yeah. you're going to invert. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then you need to know your numbers as well. Yeah. Yeah. Numbers are important. All right. Yeah. Just so. We can help some people out who may not know the number system very well. Maybe they're just getting into it. Mm -hmm. What is the number system for the key of C sharp major? Okay, so so off the top, yeah. C sharp that's gonna automatically be the one. Okay, so C sharp one, E flat two, F three, okay. F sharp four, A flat. Five, B flat six, C is seven. Back at the one, so that's C sharp. So really, it's just a scale. So everybody knows the scale. Same thing. So we just gave it numbers. So it's, it's quicker to think numbers right. than actual keys. You know, as far as like oh, A, go to A flat. Right. No matter what key we're in, mm -hmm. the number stays the same. Just think about the scale. Degree. Yep, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So if Eve is on guitar, mm -hmm. bass, or whatever, it never changes. So I'll say go to the five, or go to the two, go to the one. But no matter what key it is, it's the same. So if you think the scale, count yourself in, and then you can take your time and just Play around with it, or one, three, five, right. or uh, two, four, six. Yeah, just kind of play with that, because once you kind of hear it, mm -hmm. you know certain ways. Like um, like Nigel, he can tell you. Um, he knows, like if we in church mode, right? he knows the three mm -hmm. when he hears so He knows that, because you can, like, when you put the chords together, mm -hmm. and hear that, you like, okay, that's a yeah. three, because that's... So that's ear development, basically. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Once you hear it, you know, you kind of just kind of practice with it. It gets easier, even mm -hmm. if you're just sitting in the car, just recognizing. Yeah. Like I did it with bass lines. Okay. So that's how I recognize it. All right. So numbers will save your life musically. It really can. <laughs> it, I'm telling you, it yeah. can. All right. Um, and I know from experience myself. So that's good. We got the numbers. Now let's move to some of the patterns. So the first okay. pattern that you did, let's cover that and kind of break it down. A little mm. bit. Okay. So, well, we in C sharp. So the first pattern was, like I'm showing y'all. So, once we go out of that, we did the walk up. Okay. So, in C sharp. So, with that first pattern, which I was showing y'all, as we were coming in. Now 
now we do the walk up. It's three, four, left five, five. So church walk up. But that lets us know that we're about to go into the shout. Okay. So. So let me break that down. Yeah. So the chords I'm playing. Tritones on the chords in the left hand. E flat. A. Right hand. E flat. G. A. C. So now are you just going up half steps as far as the chords? Are? Yeah, going up half steps. So the same chord, just take them all up a half step. Half step up again. Half step up again. So I'm gonna do it again. Six. Six. Alright, that's A flat. D. Right hand. A flat. C. D. And half steps up from there. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So. Gotcha. So slow it down. So then you're going into the drive and going straight to the pattern. Straight to the pattern. All right. So what was that first pattern that y'all did? Okay. So what was I doing? Okay. So with that, I I try to find a place where I can kind of sit in and keep a good pattern going okay. where it's not in, like if I'm playing with a full band, mm -hmm. band I'm sorry, uh, I don't have... You know, in the place of, I'm in the organ player's way, mm -hmm. I'm in the bass player's way, or guitar player's way. Like, we find our, yeah. our niche and sit there and get a good gel. That's important. Yeah, because you get that good gel going, like, you can just sit there. Mm -hmm. and so you got to know your lane. Yeah, know okay. your lane. Everybody find their lane, sit there, and honestly live in it. So, um... <laughs> That's one pattern I definitely do. So let me break that down. So now I call this a little roll. I call this a little roll. <laughs> so so what I'm doing is this A flat here, but what I'm rolling off of is this E and this F. Okay. All right. C sharp, B flat, A flat. Back to that one. Okay. So is that fingering just like that's what you would do? Yeah, because... It's, it's several ways, but that's like What's that's my go-to. Okay, that's my go-to. So if anything, even if I play with a different band or even the same band, like my lane is like okay. Because literally, it's gonna leave room for the organ player to do okay. whatever he wants to do here. Bass player can hold the bottom. Lead guitar player, he'll find his lane or whatnot. Or I've, I've known some that will actually play the line with me. It's not a bad thing. It's just whatever works. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I heard you, um, when you started the praise break, mm -hmm. it seemed like you did a number of things. It was really, really nice, uh, very creative. Um, I heard you tell the bass play, uh, the drummer to set it up. Right. Um, so could you explain just a little bit of what that means, and then we'll go to ending the praise break so okay. the drummer's setting up like you you went into the drive you started from the walk up mm -hmm. the traditional way so we walk up from the three um and then 
We walk up from the six, mm -hmm. get to the one. So we go into the drive. We Everybody finds their niche or their lane. Mm -hmm. You go into the pattern. Um, but before you go into the pattern, you may ask the drummer to set it up. So how would you know what, what does the drummer need to do to set it up? Like if you're playing with guys who are not familiar with each other, mm. what would you do on keys to make sure everybody is on point? Okay. Um, literally what I try to do is try to be clear. I try. I really try. Because <laughs> my mind is kind of thinking at the same time, but I'm also playing off of feel because I'm trying to feel where the band okay. is coming from. So I'm like, I'm learning the bass player, I'm learning the drummer. So, okay. So I try to come up with something simple. Okay, that's so, good. So, um, you know, most drummers, they can set up a moment, mm -hmm. you know, to bring it in on the one. Okay. Or whatnot. So with him setting it up, so we on that one, because if the time is this, one, two, three, and I asked him to set it up, he knows to come on that bar. Okay. And sets us up, and then we all drop in on the one, or we drop in on the the walk up. Like, is there any way? Like, could we do an example? Sure. Could we do that? Yeah, let's do an example. Okay. So, say we on the one. So it'll be on me. So set it up. So simple stuff like that, cause um, instead of just kind of like everybody trying to figure out, right. okay, what we gonna do mm -hmm. or how we gonna, cause it's been times where we played and it's kind of like we look at each other yeah. like where's the one. Mm -hmm. So as long as like I feel as though if I can hear the setup, I don't have to think about where the one is coming okay. in or whatnot. It just off of a feel. So it, a lot of times it just feels better knowing that the drummer's going to do something and it's going to drop. You know where the downbeat is coming in okay. at. Where that downbeat that it'll make everything just act a smooth transition going okay. into the next part of the song. You go into your first pattern. Okay. And you run that for a while. So I guess it's just up to you how yeah. long you want to run it. And then you take it out. So how do you know when to take it out? Or what would you do to exit that praise break? Okay. That's what has a whole lot to do with signals. Okay. So I'm big on signals. So if if I'm playing with you and I'm following you, mm -hmm. but I'm waiting on you to just let me know where to go. So what I try to do is say, hey, end in here, or I hold my hand up, last one, okay, or whatnot, because he still can set up the last one, right. and we can end on that one. Okay. Yeah, so you got to be clear on that, because I can think I'm ending it, mm -hmm. and he won't know it, He'll keep going. So another train wreck. Yeah. Like, man, what you doing? Man, you didn't tell me that I was supposed to stop. Oh, yeah, I didn't. I, I was thinking about it. But, no. Nah. But, yeah, you got to be clear on the signals. No no matter what it is. Even even if we did a break, mm -hmm. same thing. Okay. Yeah, same thing. Do you think uh, that chemistry plays a big part in the band connection? Yeah. Just as, just as much as communication? Yeah, it does. Um, it does. What are your thoughts about just the chemistry because Nigel Blanding in this, you know, in this scenario, this is your brother for real. Yeah. So yeah. how much does that actually help you? Uh, a lot. <laughs> um, funny thing, we, we are six years apart. Mm -hmm. So we grew up playing together like forever, mm -hmm. same music, same pretty much anything. So no matter what I can play on keys, he's right on you. Yeah. Okay. Um, like I can literally play anything, and he'll just be like, "Oh yeah, I remember that song," and he would actually set it up, or he'd come in on the part that would make sense where it sounded like we rehearsed it. So with that chemistry, um, I never had to really think because, like, literally a certain chord change, mm -hmm. or uh, we even playing, and he, I thought about it, but he played it. Yeah. yeah so like crazy. I was like, play. I'm thinking like I should play the six. On the upbeat, yeah, I was just thinking it, but he played it, and I nodded yes. like, yeah, I was thinking that, but I didn't do it. But he really knows he knows me to the point of like, well, he would do this, mm -hmm. he probably would do this or whatever. But even if it's something that we just didn't know or whatnot, mm -hmm. like he can kind of understand where I'm going. So even if it's a groove, he can understand where I'm going because like we played together forever. 
or whatever. I taught him everything he knows. Just ah. y'all know that. But uh, <laughs> but nah, yeah, chemistry it that that really helps because um, especially when everybody's on the same page, right. like it makes things so much easier with chemistry. But but you also can build chemistry right. with people, right? Um, like especially once we figure out what our lane mm-hmm. is, and then um, like. We play together a lot. Right, we do. So, literally, you're on keys and ox. I'm on organ. So, it, it began to come to a point where we knew mm-hmm. where we were going. Even if you didn't know where right. I was going, like, you listened to I'm what listening I was playing. To, yeah. And I would play the chords. Then I'm like, do it again. Then I would actually do something like, oh, let me break the chord up so you can hear what I'm playing. Right. And then by the time you come in the next time around, mm-hmm. it sounds like a smooth transition. But like that's that's chemistry. All right. Mm-hmm. So, all right. I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Mm-hmm. All right. So, we got the band here. Yeah. All right. I want to get a little bit of input. Um, okay. So, like, okay, Nigel. Um, we Micah has talked to us a little bit about about the chemistry, uh, but I'm pretty sure that you played in settings where you you probably didn't know the guy on the keys. So let's just let's just say for shout. Um, what was your approach to following and find, let's just say finding your niche, let's put it that way. You're playing with somebody you don't really know um, and you're going to a shout. What is your approach as a drum player? Um, I'm looking for patterns. I'm looking for what's kind of going to be consistent, you know, because if I, if I don't know them, I'm listening to kind of figure out because everybody kind of has everybody has a way that they play. Everybody has a certain way that they do it. So right. I'm looking for, okay, like for instance, if I didn't know Micah, I'm gonna be listening to like, all right, so what is he playing? How much space is he leaving? How much space is he taking? So I know where I can throw myself at or kind of move out of his way. Because I mean, like, you're looking for. Even in a shout, you're looking for everything to still sound like everybody's going the same place right. at the Absolutely. same time without it being, let me drive, let me right. drive, let me drive. You know what I'm saying? Like, so another train wreck. Right, oh, right. Oh, you, you know? So I kind of look for where's what's he playing? What spot is he taking? Same with bass. What spot is he taking? Or even, especially for drums, because it's not a melodic instrument. You're not right. playing, we're not playing scales. You know, right. we're playing drums and just you know sound and, you know yeah. noise or whatever you know so you kind of got to figure out there's a way that i can play that i can help him yeah. you know create something there's a way that i can play that i can help him create something you know it just depends on what i'm listening to you know gotcha. but you're looking for patterns and that's the way to me that's the way that you build that chemistry you're just looking for okay he's gonna play a certain thing a certain way so i'm looking for all right cool all right, all right, no, it's coming up, it's coming up. So right, let me help him, you know, let me set it up, or let me move so he knows that's where the one is, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So so that's, what you're saying is, that comes from a lot of experience and even a bit of wisdom as well, all right? So even if you don't have, you know, the same amount of experience that you do, you're still talking basics and fundamentals, basics and fundamentals, taking time to listen to what's going on, what is this person going to do, let me find a pocket, and then we can build and feed off of each other. Mm-hmm. All right, so let me also talk to um, Tony, Tony on bass. So Tony, you and Micah don't really play together a lot. So as a bass player, what would, what's your approach? Like in this session here for the shout, what is your approach similar to Nigel's? Exactly, pretty much literally the same thing. Just eyeing him mm-hmm. to um, see what he do, how yeah. he want to do it, and check him out, see what he's doing. Y'all too, y'all is, y'all like y'all have to be like this. Yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. Just basically staying in your lane mm-hmm. and just focusing on the changes. Mm-hmm. Just play your part. Okay, so when he's calling out a pattern, do you would you go straight to the pattern even if you didn't know it, or would you like hold off for a second and wait till you get it? Just like the scenario where he called out, where he had me stop. Yeah. See, I, I wouldn't have, I probably did, might have did the same thing, okay. stop until I figured it out. Mm-hmm. And while him calling it out and yeah. knowing those numbers, yeah. it was that simple. Okay. I think y'all guys did a great job. So I only want to do one more thing. I want to talk about this real quick. Yeah. Um, 
So uh, the baseline for the for the praise break, we we st- we covered the starter. Right. All right. Um, what is the basic or the most common baseline that you would use? Like just for example, if something happened to the base, like the base went out. OK, so now your whole approach has to change for this praise break. So you got to play bass now. Okay. So what what is your baseline? Could you show us a baseline and yeah. then your right hand chords? Because our chords will change, too, because those of us who are used to playing with a bass player, we work in the tritones. Right. We playing around up top, adding color on the mm-hmm. top. But now this the bass player, his bass went out or something happened. So now you got to take over. Can you walk us through quickly? like what the baseline is and how your chords would change for okay. those who don't have that privilege of having a bass player or they might find themselves in this situation. Okay. Okay. Um, well, honestly, it's two ways I do this. Okay. So, okay, so I'll do it like this. Uh, without a bass player, um, same thing. So what the baseline is, three, F, F sharp, G, A flat, okay. B flat, we had the six, flat seven, seven, one. Okay. So I'm going to give you num- numbers and keys. So C, F sharp, G, A flat, B flat, B, C, C sharp. Okay. So now, with that being said... That's the bass line. Right. So with this, try to find a pattern. So I'm just playing it. Now, back to my little roll. I always talk about. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is B, F, A flat. But I'm rolling off the E to the F. Second chord, C sharp, F sharp, B flat. See, with that pattern, it kind of helps you, you know, kind of keep it together. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you... Right. Yeah, it's it's almost impossible. Yeah, (laughs) Almost impossible. So, but that's one way. So, but if you do have a bass player, say... Somebody was running around the church, mm-hmm. knock his bass amp down, yeah. or something had to the bass player, <laughs> or something, or he just threw his bass down, or something. Anything could have happened. So this is something I do, and I actually I do it a lot. So if I'm still doing it, so at that time, okay, if we're doing that, the drummer's going. Right. We have no bass. So I think like this. I said, well, I can make it a moment and say, okay, keep going. So what I can do, if I got an organ player, I say, everybody hit the one. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Yeah, um, could, you, could y'all do that real quick? <laughs> all right, so you just drop out, like, I don't know what happened to you, but you just dropped out. No, play, play, and then just drop out. One, two, three, and. Right here. All right, give me a shuffle. So with something like that, it, it'll make sense because like, oh, we lost a bass player. Oh, they meant to do that. Yeah. It, it could be thought of that way. So it's not just everybody turns right. around. Because right. even with a break, you know, you can make it that moment. All right. He felt like, all right. So if he changes out and kind of like he did, he kind of dropped the kick out. Mm-hmm. So the kick and the bass goes together. Right. So he just left some symbols in the snare. That's smart. Man. So it's just kind of leave it. Mm-hmm. Leave that. So when he's ready, we can walk back in. And it, it just helps that way. So if you got a bass player, mm-hmm. something like that happens, make that moment as uh you can make it a you can make it anything. You can I know organ players, oh just give me cymbals right. or anything like that. They you know they love that stuff. Even yeah. I do it. Um or oh, you do it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I definitely do. <laughs> so you do that. Um 
and actually talk with the drummer. So mm-hmm. even if it's just playing around with stuff, you know, you just got to be able to think fast right. Right. and like, what can I do? Or like, okay, he dropped out. All right, drop the kick. And we just make that moment until he's ready or whatever. So it'll sound like, even if it's not even intentional, it's mm-hmm. just like it, it still can feel good. Right. Yeah. So that's, 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 that's my thing. That's okay. how I do it. I think that was great. Like, um, and then thinking simple. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes in the moment, if, you, if it catches you off guard, you can kind of like, oh, snap, you know, like, oh, man, what am I going to do? Mm. So I think it's great to think simple. Like yeah. what you did was you just did some hits. Yeah. So you don't even really have to worry about doing the bass line on nope. keys. Just do some hits. And then also it takes some coordination work. Okay? Oh, yeah. Working that bass line and then playing on the top, especially if you don't do it often. Like mm-hmm. most of us, we may start out that way. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we're used to playing bass and keys, maybe mm-hmm. two keyboards or maybe one. Yeah, I didn't even like bass for a long time. Right, <laughs> right. So, <laughs> and then, you know, you get, you're you blessed now, so you got a bass player. Yeah, and yeah. And sometimes you can get lazy. I said, for lack of better words, not literally, but you don't really have to play yeah. bass. Mm-hmm. So you're used to playing a certain way. Yeah. Now, you're in trouble if you don't practice just just make it maybe some kind of routine just in case. Just in case. Yeah. Okay. But I also think it was good, as I said, for you to keep it simple. So for all of the minstrels out there, the creatives out there, keep it simple, at least starting with, mm-hmm. instead of trying to maintain the certain creative intensity. Absolutely. You might not be able to do it because the bass player just dropped out. Yeah. So you got to figure out an alternative route to keep it going, mm-hmm. keep the energy, but change the approach. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. So. We're going to wrap it up. Um, I think you guys have given us some great information, a wealth of information mm. um, and the examples. All right. And so I hope that you guys have enjoyed this lesson. Um, again, we have Micah Blanding on keys. We got Tony Washington on bass and we got Nigel Blanding on drums, giving us some patterns and some concepts. Um, I believe it was a combination of basic, intermediate and even advanced stuff that you guys can take. Um, take it home, practice it. Um, and also, I like to encourage y'all to think outside of the box. So what we show you, let that be what it is, but also take it to the next level if you can. Don't be afraid to be creative. Be you. All right. I want to encourage y'all to continue to practice hard and smart. And as always, keep God first and stay humble. Until the next time, you guys be blessed. Jabbar Brown signing out.